All right, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome back to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. Today it's a one versus one on Kalani Firma between our blue U.S. Forces player on the right side of the map, Don't Know. And uh, I actually casted Don't Know for the first time on my 26th cast, and it is now the 123rd cast. So I figured it's about time to cast another Don't Know game now on the far left side of the map. Vermacht von Aston just created that barracks, and now bringing out the Pioneers. And rear Russian troops taking the very first territory point there. Meanwhile, the Pioneers will most likely take the very first territory point on the left side of the map. Now an MG-42 is out and a Grenadier to follow, which is the typical starting Wehrmacht. It's pretty good. Uh, you typically get uh, the Grenadiers about, uh, about the same time before the uh, MG-42 even makes it out of your base. You typically have your Grenadiers, so it's kind of like having two units at the same time there. It's very, very useful. And now moving out towards the bottom side of the map for the U.S. Forces player. Take the territory point here, and we'll stop there at the edge. And if you stop there at the edge, it's kind of more efficient, and then you can take off a little bit faster instead of standing all the way back here and then having to take off. But uh, either way, Rear Russia Troops now taking the fuel point. Meanwhile, the Riflemen will be moving forward here. And we have another Rifleman squad out for the U.S. Forces. They're going to be taking the top side of the map. And Pioneers now putting some down some razor wire in the front side of this cover here, of this Panzer IV by the looks of it. And you do that because you don't want your opponent to be using this cover against you, just in case you didn't know that. And it is a really, really good one versus one tip to uh, put a razor wire in really strategic locations like that. And then that way your opponent can't use it. Another good spot is right here, uh, putting it in front of this uh, little tractor here, because that tractor gives green cover to any troops standing behind that. Now. MG42 take the uh, munitions point there. Has a really good spot. Also creating a sandbags here. And also created sandbags down here at the bottom. And uh, if, in case you didn't know as well, another tip for one versus one is always create sandbags wherever you go, as long as you have that doctrine, I suppose. Um, because by the time you're done creating the sandbags, you typically have captured the territory point. So you might as well. Otherwise, you're just standing around. So you might as well make sandbags. They are free, and by the time you're done, you already have the point anyway. And now Rafeman standing around. I think he's trying to micro elsewhere and not really noticing. They're creating sandbags again. As you can see, the sandbags are pretty much done by the time you capture the point. So it's really, really useful, and you can use those as cover later on. Russian troops taking the bottom victory point, and the Rafeman taking the top victory point. Also creating the sandbags at the top. Better deers taking that top victory point there. And no shots fired just yet. It looks like that's the sounds like that's the first fire on the game there. And Rifleman can deal with these pioneers as the pioneers are very very short range, but they don't have any really cover at their maximum range. You either have to get here or behind here, and that's not very good cover at all. Meanwhile, Rifleman here trying to move up in between these two here, but the MG42 is going to be firing on them. They're going to get suppressed in open territory. Just going to have to run away. There's really nothing you can do there. Meanwhile, the Rifleman here are going to get by because the MG42 is faced the other way, so they're going to get by there for now and engage with the Grenadiers. Going to have to run to pass negative cover there. And loses one man due to that negative cover. Now not in cover at all. No cover, and the Grenadiers have green cover. So he's definitely going to lose this fight here. He's going to have to run away, and he's going to have to run past the MG here. And this is certainly not good. Running past this MG is going to get uh, peppered up a little bit, and he's running across negative cover there. But uh, doesn't lose another man out of that squad. Riflemen here going to engage with Grenadiers. And one of those Riflemen are uh, out and about. So that is not a good spot here for him. And that one died there because of that. Meanwhile, Grenadier and Pioneer moving past all the action. And taking that territory point there to disrupt some resources. As it is a cutoff point, you can see it will disrupt all of these resources down here for the U.S. forces. Now he only has 16 and 10 because he doesn't have this. As you can see, it cut it off, and uh, that is always a good option to do. Meanwhile, the rear national troops engaging with the Grenadiers, and standard territory point here neutralized at the moment, or rather stopped. And now the rear, uh, rear national troops here may be lost. He only has a small sliver of health. He wasn't really microing that, and I'm sure he will lose this. And maybe not. No, not going to be very lucky. Going to lose that rear echelon troop. Not too big of a loss, but they did buff rear echelon troops uh, in a recent patch. They buffed their damage from 8 to 10, so they are much more useful than they used to be. Although you can't uh, spam them nearly as much, so I suppose that's uh, a difference. And they do 
they turn into a five-man squad at three veterans. See, now Rifleman here getting torn off. They have to run past all this nonsense, all this noise here from the Germans. And he may lose this Rifleman, loses that Rifleman. So now one rear echelon troop, one Rifleman lost there already for the U.S. forces. And we have an M20 scout car out on the map. A utility car, but same thing. And takes a Panzerfaust to the face. And now the engine damaged is going to have to... Pop that crew out of there, repair that on up, is uh, getting those armored skirts on that utility car as well. Meanwhile, the lieutenant here only has three men in the squad, didn't really uh, reinforce him. Uh, brought him out of the base a little bit too quick, as you can see this one wasn't reinforced in time. Rifleman inside the church here, going to be engaging with two grenadiers, but uh, may start losing some of those riflemen as two grenadiers are pretty good. And now on this map, these two buildings here are very, very good on this map as you can hold the center of the map with an MG and maybe put a mortar in the back too and you can really hold that center very easily. The M20 takes two Panzerfoss right after it was done being repaired and that must be very annoying as you just got done repairing your car and you brought it out of the driveway and now you have to repair it again. Lieutenant here. Not in good shape, just hiding behind this log here. These Grenadiers firing away at him. Very low on health, very, very low on health. May lose this lieutenant, and if he loses this lieutenant, that would be really bad. There he goes, retreats, but loses the lieutenant, and that is three lost so far for the U.S. forces. And now these riflemen in bad shape, so tons and tons of losses here for the U.S. forces already. Now another M20 utility car out on the map, very interesting. The two M20 utility cars, you do not see that every day. So that is very interesting indeed. Does have plenty of munitions. Can upgrade both the uh, armor skirts. They are going to upgrade that armor skirt as well. Grenadiers have taken the bottom territory there too. Uh, one victory point for each side here. So far the U.S. forces at 478. The Wehrmacht at 484. So uh, pretty even game so far. Even Stevens, if you will. Now the victory point at the top will be taken by the Wehrmacht. Can take down that U.S. score just a little bit. We have a Zondekraftfahrzeug. Out of the map here, 222. I just really like saying that. It's such a fun word to say. And now the 222 does sort of counter the M20. However, you can uh, eject your crew. Your crew has a has a bazooka, and it looks like he's going to do just that. The bazookas are going to fire on that uh, 222, but they miss. That was quite a distance uh, to fire on that 222 there. A medical bunker there at the base. And now Rifleman here moving up to the victory point. However, they're going to be in that MG range. And there he goes, getting suppressed. And now he's just going to have to bail out of there. Otherwise, he's going to take the flame to the face. The and that is not is good. Rifleman here going to be taking the left side territory point. Took the other territory point as well. The U.S. forces owns the bottom side of the map. However, unfortunately, the, the for the U.S. forces, that is, uh, the Wehrmacht owns the top side of the map. Two victory points for the Wehrmacht. Taking down that U.S. score now. M20 utility car here. Going to be firing away at the Grenadiers inside this building. And they're getting a little bit too close. They could just pop those Grenadiers out and Panzerfaust. But he's just going to take them out the other way. He's going to play the safe way, I suppose. And he doesn't really have that many uh, munitions to spend in the first place. He only has 44. While it does not take 44 munitions to use a Panzerfaust, he certainly doesn't want to waste all of his munitions on them. And the scout car there, 222. Being repaired up forces those M20s out of there. I don't really want to do that. Although, again, you can uh, eject the crew out of the M20 scout car and bazooka it. But it's easier said than done. It takes quite a bit of micro to do that and watch all of your other troops on the map at the same time. Another thing you want to do is if you are if you know you're going to lose your M20 utility car, you might as well just eject your crew and keep your crew because they do have that one bazooka. And that is certainly better than not having that crew at all. And they can fight okay well as, um, at that. Now the uh, utility car here going to back up. Going to pop smoke and stop that scout car from hitting. Now pops up that crew and going to go after the scout car. Misses the scout car. Their bazookas are quite inaccurate typically. And other utility car takes engine damage. And utility car now pushing forward. Or the 222 rather. And pops out both of those crews. And Rifleman up here engaging with Grenadiers and probably not going to last too long. They go try to hit uh, that uh, 222 again, but uh, he backed it out in time. There's a pack 40 there as well, so he really needs to bail uh, on those 222 or on those M20s. Getting a little mixed up there. 
And Riflemen forced out of there, didn't really do too much. They did capture that victory point up there for now. And trying to complete these sandbags here. And this 222 right here should just be moving forward. And trying to kill these Riflemen as they're completing the sandbag. Because they would just destroy the sandbag. And there he goes. No, blasting away on these Riflemen. Not going to be able to capture the victory point. And the sandbags were almost lost anyway. And there he goes, actually destroying those sandbags. That's a really good idea. And finish those off. Now the 222s are, are fully repaired and ready to go again. Now the Pioneers are in a little bit of trouble here. Two Pioneers getting uh, tossed around here by the cars. And there is that 222 Pack 40 is being brought up. And ejected the crew there. And this uh, M20 here is going to take some damage. And now down to a small sliver of health. I don't even think that is a tenth of its health. It is very low. There was a ground fire. It missed. And there goes some more smoke that will cover these M20s. And he's going to pop out the crew there. He's going to survive. He will keep that crew, as you can see. And it does have the, the bazooka on it. And now this 222 here is stuck on the wreckage. What is it doing? It's spinning around in circles. And it says 322 on the car, but it is a 222. And now the M20 scout, or utility car here, is going to take a shot in the rear. And is very, very low. We'll lose this utility car. Now going on the other side of the smoke. Oh, very, very lucky. How lucky is that? And now the M5 steward out on the map. Pushing forward after that pack. However, Grenadiers are going to Panzerfaust and damage its engine. And now it's just going to have to juke back and forth here and try and avoid this pack 40. And can it do it? And it can, but uh, very hard, particularly with that engine damage. Now the uh, Puma out on the map here going after that M5 steward. And can he do this or not? And now it's going to pop the shell shock ability. More than likely he does and it stuns uh, that Puma. But however, he recruits that pack 40. And now it looks like it's over here for the M5 steward. Could eject that crew and at least keep the vehicle crew, but he does not. And the vehicle crew of the M5 steward is not particularly uh, as useful as the uh, utility car crew because they do not have a bazooka like the utility car does, but it is better than not having your crew. MG42 here setting up, going to suppress the captain. Meanwhile, the utility car coming around the side. Now two Ostrupen out on the map here, and they did remove the veterancy from the Ostrupen. It no longer has a random veterancy, which I really, really enjoyed. Uh, that random veterancy it was really nice to have three-star veterancy and an LMG and such, but uh, they took that away. And now they can only have an LMG 42, but uh, he did get one out of that squad, so that's pretty nice. And you do get two at a time uh, for pretty cheap. Uh, with that call in here, Grenadiers taking the territory point. This is a cutoff point here, and it will cut off his resources. As you can see, very low resources. He's not gaining the resources from the bottom now. Rangers here dealing with the Grenadiers. Rangers do not have that Thompson upgrade yet. An infantry squad has been killed. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Utility car's engine is damaged. It has been damaged by that Ostrupen there. The Ostrupen do have the Panzerfaust. And it looks like he went right after those Ostrupen with it, which isn't a really uh, particularly a recommended idea. And now the M20 there finished off, but still has both of the crews, so that is pretty good. And now the crew coming down to the bottom side of the map. Going to take this victory point here out from under the Wehrmacht. And they definitely need to do that because the Wehrmacht will be taking the center victory point here soon. 390 to 477. Wehrmacht has not lost too much yet. Only 23 points lost through the whole game. 75 now setting up here. Going to be firing away on the Ostrupen by the looks of it. And maybe he can't exactly see where they are, but he will see now uh, with the Rangers inside there. But they have Thompsons, which are short range and will not do too much to these Ostrupen here behind the good cover and there is cover everywhere here as you can see you can get behind the cover of wrecked vehicles and use it and it's just everywhere with these three in this tight spot here you can fit a lot of troops in there but you really wouldn't want to do that so much especially when the 75 is fired on you wouldn't want that aoe killing off half your troops now up top here we have Rifleman and that M20 crew taking that top victory uh, victory point and the victory point down at the bottom being taken by the Grenadiers at the same time. So an eye for an eye, if you will. MG42 inside the uh, house here. 
I'm gonna turn around sooner or later here, not facing the proper direction. However, these troops are behind green cover, and when you're behind green cover, you actually uh, don't get suppressed uh, nearly as quickly. It's still based on RNG for the most part. So you can still get suppressed uh, sort of right away. And it doesn't work so good if you're already getting shot at and then move into uh, green cover. You're pretty much will get suppressed either way. And uh, just now starting to suppress these riflemen here in the back. Still hasn't been suppressed to the captain. However, the Pioneers now moving up on these troops here, flaming them up, and they have to run immediately. I know the 75's in a little bit of trouble. The Pioneers are going to make it right to that 75. And 75 in big trouble here. They're just going to try and pull it out of there, but uh, I don't think... Uh, they may actually save this with these troops here coming in, but no, D Cruz, that whole thing, one of them runs away. And now the Grenadiers here taking the cutoff point once again from the U.S. forces. And they did neutralize that. And they don't have to actually cap this point here. All they have to do is take it. And you do not get the resources from down here. As you can see, it cuts off this area here on the map. And you do not get the munitions. And these points here, they are not connected anymore. So you can see it's very low munitions and fuel. Rangers here get forced out of there by that uh, flamethrower inside the building. Rifleman here taking the munitions point. And looks like he lost a squad there. He's lost a squad of vehicle crew, I believe. Uh, to that command tank. And there are teller mines in the ground here from the Wehrmacht. And now Captain and Rifleman moving on out over to the top side of the map here. Panzer IV took an anti-tank rifle grenade. Now its engine is damaged. Vehicle crew now taking the bottom side of the map there. And Rifleman Rangers, rather, inside the church here, getting shot at by all kinds of noise. The MG42 and two squads. Command take trying to get out of there here, and Pioneer is trying to repair it, but uh, it continues to move. And he has to continue to move out of there as we have Rifleman moving in and that captain as well. And the Rifleman are going to use an anti tank rifle grenade by the looks of it. And there he goes, hits it again, but does it only a bit of damage. And the captain going to try and fire and take it out. He will not take this out. He's going to get suppressed, and he's going to have to get out of there. And now the Puma moving up on these troops. Not that that is a particularly scary thing to have happen, as the Puma doesn't do so well against troops. And forces all those troops out of there. Nearly got that command tank, damaged its engine, and took out its main gun. Rangers here dealing with Grenadiers and dealing with them very well, forcing them out of there. And now it's all about the Oz Troop in here. He needs to push up to the fence there and get some cover. Gonna throw a grenade first. And takes out one or two of them. And another one falls there. And now Oz Troop in very low on health. Another one falls. Gonna have to retreat this out of here. Very, very low on health. And two Rangers for the U.S. forces are out. Grenadiers now taking the bottom victory point, and soon we'll have all three victory points. 353 for the U.S. forces, 463 for the Wehrmacht. And Rangers here just taking shots, and just going to back out and get over there for now. Uh, Struppen have to deal with the riflemen. Riflemen are going to move up and try and get some cover. Probably behind here would be better. Uh, that's not going to provide too much. Get in the corner up top here for cover. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to do pretty well. And uh, Struppen doing fairly well. Holding out for a little while. Going to hide behind the fence. But that's not going to provide too much cover. Now the riflemen have pretty good cover. Now all three victory points belong to... Nope, now one has been neutralized up top there. And one is being taken at the bottom here by the Rifleman. Meanwhile, in the center, Rangers are moving on in. But there's a command tank and a Puma. And he's going to take a lot of hits here. And that Puma there took a, right, a bazooka shot from that M20 crew. Rangers going to throw a grenade on that MG42 there. A wise choice. But uh, now the building will collapse soon. Need to get those rangers out of there as soon as possible. The building will collapse very soon. There he goes, just barely by the skin of his ass. Got out of there. Victory point almost taken by the U.S. forces, although not quite necessary. He does have two at the moment. 
Rifleman here moving up on Ostrupen. And Rifleman needs to just move up even closer here and just get point blank range and get that cover. But uh, lost way too many troops in that mean in that uh, time there. And Panzer IV Command Tank gonna fire point blank here at these Rifleman and doesn't take any out, but uh, may lose some uh, to this uh, Pioneer squad. And now very low, gonna chase down that Rifleman squad. And try, trying hard here to get that Rifleman. And can he get, does finish up that Rifleman squad. And that is very unfortunate. That is uh, uh, only one Rifleman left on the map. So that was one of two. And now two victory points here for the U.S. forces. Uh, does have 12 command points on the U.S. forces. And one more command point will lead him to the Pershing heavy tank. And looks like he does have uh, just enough fuel. He has 240, takes 230 fuel. But there is a decent amount of armor on the map here for the Wehrmacht. He does have that command tank and a and a Puma. And he has two pack 40s as well that can deal with the Pershing once it comes out. So we'll see if he can do that or not. He, he does have the Pershing available now. Not coming in just yet. And now Rangers moving in with Rifleman. And Rangers force those Oss trooping out of there. Meanwhile, the captain is firing it, whatever here, missing the uh, pioneers, and now going to lose this captain. Wasn't really paying attention to the captain, and lost that. Now it's a third pack 40 is coming out on the map by the looks of it. He knows that this Pershing is coming because he sees the Rangers, so he knows he has heavy cavalry company. And so he's preparing in advance for that Pershing. And three pack 40s will certainly do the job on just about anything that moves. Rangers, they'll take the victory point there. Third pack out on the map here. Has two right here in the center. And soon the Pershing is out and about now. And we'll be moving forward. Has a 57 of his own, however. Now the Pershing firing away at the church. Forces those troops out of there, bringing up that 57 to deal with the command taken, the Puma. That's two Rangers out of the map here. One of them is idle, all the way back at base there. Meanwhile, up top, Ostrupen have captured the top victory point there. 319 to 407. The M20 vehicle territory. crew trying to take the center victory point here, but unfortunately going to get pinned eventually by this MG42 and does get pinned there. And now the Pershing has moved up a little bit, but there are two packs here. Where is that third pack? It's right here. And if he can move all three of those packs up and hit that Pershing three times at the same time with packs, uh, probably won't kill it from the front, but uh, we'll certainly take it down to about half health, and he's moving really into dangerous territory. There he goes. Takes two hits there from those packs, and now he's going to back up. Gets stuck there on that uh, 57 real quick. And now it's engine, or not engine damage, but uh, rather it's uh, damaged just a little bit there by about a quarter of its health from two of those shots. So another shot would have probably brought it down to approximately half health there. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Rangers now taking the top victory point here for the U.S. forces. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, Rangers are taking, trying to take the bottom victory point here, trying to for force these Ostrupen out of here. Now the Pershing comes around the corner there. Does a Kool-Aid man and bursts through that uh, wall of trees. And now it's engine damaged by the Panzerfaust of the Ostrupen and really has to bail out of here as soon as possible. Now, Pack 40 is pushing across the map here. Puma takes a shot from that 57. And now the Pershing in big trouble. Very low on health. And nearly destroyed. And uh, we'll have to bring that all the way back to base for safety. Pack 40 is being brought up here, trying to get to that Pershing. But they will not. One of Rifleman, they're lost to a Pack 40. And trying to push forward after these pack 40s here. Looks like he's trying to throw a nade on him, but he does not have the grenade upgrade, so he cannot do that, actually. 
57 was firing on that Panzer IV there. Hits it with an anti-tank rifle grenade, damages the engine. Loses that 57, though. Gonna, Oh, it looks like those Grenadiers, for a moment, were going to crew that 57, but they would have been uh, destroyed by those Rangers. So it was good that they bailed. Now the Panzer IV firing away, and that uh, Pershing all the way back in base needs repaired up. And has plenty of manpower, but is not buying anything, really. So he could get out more riflemen or even Rangers, uh, what have you. We have lost an MG team. So floating 400 right now. Rangers pushing forward after that sniper and not going to get it. Very unlikely, rather. And no, not going to get it at all. Rangers pushing forward here after the Pack 40s. Pack 40s being pushed out of here. And going to decrew one. Decrews one. Very nice. And will he decrew another one? Decrews both of them. Now just needs a retreat. Needs to retreat these Rangers out of here as soon as possible so he keeps them. Rangers going to push forward. These ones are will retreat. These ones will stay. However, they're in negative cover. Grenade beat is thrown. Forces them back a little bit there. And now pushing forward again here. But only four men left. And against quite a bit here. But uh, actually taking, doing a pretty good job. Here comes a rifle grenade. And it hits. And it will hit. Oh, almost hit the back uh, Rangers there. And now going to retreat out of there. Did decrew... Uh, all of those packs? Yeah, he decrewed all of them. There's one here, one here, and one here. Can be picked back up by the Wehrmacht, but uh, that will cost him a, a pretty penny to do that. He will have to use all of his Grenadiers uh, to recrew these packs. And he does not have the manpower to do that. He's only floating about 50 manpower right now. Does crew that MG42 to keep that center victory point. Meanwhile, Reifman going to try and go down to the bottom victory point, but uh, unfortunately that Panzer IV has been repaired. Going to hit it with an anti-tank rifle grenade, but it looks of it and does, but it does not damage the engine. It needs to be brought down to 75% health. And the Pershing fully repaired. Well, nearly fully repaired. He actually didn't repair it all the way. And going to burst through the wall. Wall o trees. Going to burst through another wall o trees. And go after that Panzer IV there. Now going after it. And damages it heavily, heavily damages it. That Panzer IV is in a little bit of trouble. Runs over a Teller mine, unfortunately. Now it's engine totally out. Heavy engine damage. Now he cannot get this uh, Pershing out of here. He is in big, big trouble. He will not be able to get that Pershing out of there in time. Can he get his Rangers up there to stop those packs from firing? And as you can see, it's slowed to an absolute crawl. And is he behind cover yet or not? No, Pax still firing and loses uh, his Pershing there. That is definitely bad. And now going after the Pax here with his Rangers. However, getting suppressed there by that MG42. And tons of troops being pushed on uh, to the U.S. forces here. And those Rangers doing work, but they are in, they are in way over their head. Way too many troops. And still has one of those M20 vehicle crews. Packs have been recruited, at least two of them. I don't see the other one. The other one here, uh, only de only recruited two of them. Lost that Pershing, unfortunately. That Teller mine damaged its engine so badly that uh, it couldn't get out of there. Could get another Pershing here fairly soon. It has 230 fuel, or needs 230 fuel. Has uh, nearly 200 fuel. So really, uh, it's just a matter of time before we can get another one. However, 600 uh, manpower is sort of hard to float while you're trying to uh, reinforce all of your troops. It looks like he's bringing in another 57. Has another 57 here, though, that he could uh, get. That would be cheaper. It's actually just cheaper just to crew the weapon and uh, reinforce it, really. But has another 57 on the way here. It could recruit this one as well and have two of them and uh, possibly deal with that Panzer IV there. The Rangers now pushing forward here. Only four Rangers in this squad here. It looks like he didn't actually uh, reinforce that all the way. M20 there. Uh, recruise that 75. I'm going to set up that 75 again and start firing away. Bottom victory point being taken by Grenadiers. And now that that wall has been opened up, you can just prance him his uh, silly ass right through there. And Ostrupin here trying to run away. 57 now out on the field. And unfortunately, those Ostrupin going to do uh, work on that uh, 57. And he needs to get that out of there. Meanwhile, the 75 uh, firing up, but it is way too close. And Ranger's going to chase down some of these Ostrup and maybe take out one or two. They are in negative cover now. Now is the time, but it uh, doesn't look like they're going to get anything at all. Ranger's taking the munitions point, but unfortunately they're not taking the victory point. Now up top here, rear echelon troop 
and a rifleman pushing forward after these grenadiers. And there goes an, uh, a rifle grenade, but it missed those uh, rear echelon troops. And forces the grenadiers out of there. Now we'll take that top victory point by the looks of it. And 57 now being hit by flamethrowers in a very good spot. Now rangers might be lost here. Oh no, loses a ranger. And that is definitely not good at this point in the game. And almost has enough for another Pershing here. We'll nearly have 600. He just needs to actually wait. He has 400. He, he, he nearly had enough, but he, he reinforced some of those troops. And reinforced some of those vehicle crew. Which he definitely needs to do, but at the same time he also needs that Pershing out again. And we'll see in just a moment. Has 530. Will just be a matter of time before you get another one. Pioneer is going to try and chase down this 75 here. However, M20 coming. Now firing away into the house, but uh, Flamethrower coming out of there. It's a little bit better. And Rangers here going after the Ostrupen. Just need to get real close and start busting them up. And there he goes, lowering those Ostrupen pretty quickly. Nearly enough for another Pershing. And does get out another Pershing here, bringing it out on the battlefield now. And vehicle crew stuck all the way in the back here. 217 to 390 at the moment. And Pershing cruising across the map here. And very silently moving. Apparently doesn't have the engine sound on this Pershing. Uh, I think that's just a bug from time to time. And it looks like he is pushing uh, a track there. A tank wheel, if you will. Just pushing it along. And there it goes. Now the engine sound is back for some reason. Takes two shots there from those packs. And now 57 firing at the Panzer IV command tank. And hits it again. And its engine is damaged. Hit, hit it with a anti-tank rifle grenade. And now it's engine damaged. So it's pretty much out of the fight there. And Pershing firing away at some troops. And takes another shot there from those packs. Need to back that up a little bit. Going to take another shot here soon. And takes another shot. Now very low on that Pershing. Well done. We have forced the enemy down and now the Grenadiers points. around the back side here are going to hit it with a Panzerfaust. And they're going to hit it for sure. And now damages its engine. And with its engine damaged like that, it's not going to be able to get out. He surrenders the game. And... He simply just got beat out on this game. It was pretty even for a while there, but uh, was losing way too much. He just had really, really bad luck at the beginning of the game there. He lost, uh, what was it, two rifleman squads, a rear echelon troop, and a lieutenant within the first, I think, 10 minutes of the game. And that is definitely not good because of those Those all lasted uh, till now in the game. He would have quite the army, and he wouldn't be in the situation he is now. And they would all be three-star veterans, more than likely, so... Because he lost those, he lost all that veterancy and uh, lost quite a bit of resources as well to re uh, to actually regain all of those. It's way too much. And the Pershing was pretty much screwed. These Ostrupen were going to be moving up and hit it with another Panzerfaust. And uh, it may have died at that point or the Grenadiers would have been... Uh, cooled down again and they could have fired their own Panzerfaust. But I hope you guys enjoyed this replay and I'll see you guys next time.